Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth and I read bouquins in French and books in English. It's been a week since I've talked to you and since then I have finished three books. I'm on a roll! <laughs> the first book I finished was The Case of the Murderous Dr. Cream, The Hunt for a Serial, no, The Hunt for a Victorian Era Serial Killer by Dean Job. This is a new release. This was released this summer, I believe, and I'm surprised I'm not seeing more of it on Booktube. I thought this would, it has everything to be a Booktube darling. It's true crime, so it's already a bit fascinating, though I have to admit that I find it sometimes icky. I find myself icky of being interested in murderers and of enjoying reading about people being murdered. It's kind of weird, but in this particular case, given that it happened 130 years ago, I guess it's okay. There, there probably is nobody left to be offended by what is written in this book, so um, I guess it's okay. Um, so it's about Dr. Cream. At the time, apparently he was as famous as Jack the Ripper. He was convicted of only two murders, though he is suspected of having committed many more. And what is interesting in this book is that it focuses, well, it does focus on Dr. Cream, but it does not necessarily focus on his psychology and why he committed these murders. It is much more about how he got away with it for so long, how he managed to escape justice for so long. And one of the reason was that he traveled a lot. Um, he was born in the UK, in Glasgow, I believe, where he lived until he was six years old. And then his family moved to Quebec City, where he grew up. He studied medicine in Montreal, and then he went back to London to study a bit more. And then he came back and practiced medicine in a few places in Canada, uh, in a couple of places in Ontario. And then he went to the United States, and then he went to the UK. So every time he changed place, he could basically erase his past and start over again, which is basically what happened. Um, when he was growing up, he was a very normal young man, nobody had any problems with him, he appeared to be a very nice person, promised to a brilliant future. Um, then he went to Montreal, where he studied medicine, and that is where things started to go wrong. Uh, like many serial killers, he started by setting fire. He tried to scam an insurance company by setting fire to his belongings and his board, the, the room where he was boarding. And uh, also, he got a girl into trouble, but because he was a doctor, he gave her some medicine so that it could induce abortion. When the father of the girl realized that, he went to find Cream with a couple of police officers. But the reason the police officers were there were, was not to arrest him for performing an illegal abortion. It was to bring Cream back so that he would marry the girl. Uh, which is what happened. He married the girl, but of course he left the next day for England. And that is where he studied a bit more. And while he was in England, he could not really escape his past because some of his colleagues from McGill were also in London to further their studies. So they knew about the arson and they knew about the, the wife back in uh, Canada. So uh, he realized past was hard to escape. And uh, while he was in London, his wife mysteriously died. She was young. She was 22 years old, I think. And uh, yeah, 22 years old, don't just drop dead like that. But she did. And uh, the local doctor did not question much, even though she said that she took some pills that her husband had sent her. Uh, so that was probably his, well, probably, we don't know. It was maybe his first murder, um, his own wife. Um, but he wasn't caught because uh, the doctor in the locality of Waterloo, that is in the eastern townships in the province of Quebec, decided that it was a natural death or perhaps the father of the bride did not want any more scandal surrounding his family and that there was nothing we could do anyway since the cream was overseas. So nothing happened with that. And after he left the UK as a certified surgeon, doctor and everything you want, uh, Cream came back and he practiced in Ontario and once again mysterious deaths surrounded him but because he was a doctor he it was hard to raise suspicion uh, towards him because people trust doctors and also it's hard to prove that the if a death happens that it is intentional that it's not just a sad accident that uh, there was just unfortunately some mistake in the preparation of the medication or something like that 
So he moved around quite a few times. Uh, there was once in Ontario that he was prosecuted for murder, but he was innocent. He was declared innocent. After that, he moved to the United States, where once again, women started to die mysteriously around him. But at one point, a man died. Um, that is another thing that is mentioned in this book, is that while Cream was killing women and women who were on the poor side of society, many of them being prostitute, actually. Um, many victims of Jack the Ripper were accused of being prostitutes when they were not. But in the case of Dr. Cream, it is true that many of his victims were prostitutes. Um, so uh, because he attacked women who had no standing in society, he could go get away with it much easier. But what happened in Chicago is that he killed a man. He poisoned a man because he was having an affair with his wife. And uh, he had the idea after that of writing a blackmail letter to the pharmacist who had prepared the medications. So the reason why he killed the man was not so much to kill a person, it was for a blackmail plot. And that is what caught the attention of the police. And also in that particular case, they had the testimony of the wife who knew what happened. And the wife turned uh, witness for the prosecution and she helped convict Dr. Cream. So Dr. Cream was convicted of murder in the United States and should have stayed behind bars for the rest of his life. However, he had good friends and he had... As an educated man, he could persuade people that he was innocent. He managed to convince his brother that he was. So his brother gave him some money and started uh, writing letters. And uh, even the, the lawyer, the prosecutor who had helped convict uh, Dr. Cream, turned witness for Dr. Cream in a way. He wrote a letter saying, oh, no, that might have been a miscarriage of justice. So the governor of Illinois pardoned Dr. Cream and he was freed after 10 years in jail. And uh, one of the reasons he was uh, freed was that he promised that he would leave the state of Illinois. So he left and uh, left for London once again. And once again, he left his past behind. And uh, before the internet and before centralized databases, the past remained in the past. It was very hard for information to travel overseas, like th this type of information. So Dr. Cream became a doctor in a very poor neighborhood of London in Lambeth. And he gave pills to various people. Some of them survived and some of them did not. But many of the women who died they, it was not suspected that they were murdered. Uh, they thought it was natural causes, or rather the doctors who found them thought it was natural causes. It was apoplexy, it was heart attack, it was a tetanus, it was, it could have been anything. So the, once again, the only reason Cream got caught was because of some blackmailing plots. He wrote letters accusing various people, various important people of having murdered various people of having murdered that woman and that woman and that woman. And it's only then that the police realized what th these women were murdered and they dug up one of the women, one of the bodies and performed an autopsy. And that is another thing that is interesting in this book. It is that it shows the beginning of forensic science and the beginning, one of the first times when science was used in a trial to convict someone of using poison to murder someone. So he was tried for the murder of only one woman because uh, they had files for other women, but they started with one. And at the time, they wasted no time. When the person was convicted, he was convicted to death and uh, the sentence was carried out quite quickly. So Dr. Cream was never tried for the other murders. Um, and anyway, it's a very interesting story. It's a it's about Dr. Cream, of course, but it's also about uh, the methods of investigation at the time, about uh, the beginning of forensic science, about the beginnings of medicine. It's about uh, social classes. It's about a lot of things. So it's very interesting, and I expect I will see a lot more people reading it on Booktube. Um, another one that I read, this one is Venice, Pure City by Peter Ackroyd. It, this is a very different tone from <laughs> Dr. Cream. Uh, this is officially a history book, but, but, um, it is about history. It is about the history of Venice, but if you expect dates, if you expect, uh, names, if you expect numbers, it's not a book for you. This is an impressionistic portrait of Venice. 
Peter Ackroyd uh, talks about the history of Venice. So the full 1000 years, it started uh, the first traces of habitation in the lagoon is in the 8th century or 7th century, something like that. And very soon it became a republic and remained a republic until the seven, 1797. But what Peter Ackroyd does, it is not telling the story chronologically, it is by theme. Uh, for example, there's a chapter on water, there's a chapter on light, there's a chapter on um, on commerce in Venice, a chapter uh, about the place of the church in Venice, a chapter about uh, the carnival, the very famous carnival, about the arts, about uh, the notion of luxury. Um, it's a thematic biography of Venice and it is very interesting. Uh, it is dreamy, I should say. It is well written and I longed to be in Venice. I longed to go to Venice. So while reading it, I spent a lot of time on the internet. I googled a lot of things just to add images of what, sometimes of what he was talking about, but sometimes of um, uh, to read more uh, about certain people that he was talking about. Um, there are not many famous Venetians, is that how it's pronounced? Uh, people who were born in Venice who became famous. There, there are, there's not a multitude of them. If we compare it, for example, to Florence, who gave us uh, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and um, uh, Botticelli and uh, Machiavelli and a whole bunch of famous people. Uh, for Venice, one of the most famous is Casanova. And what did Casanova do? Well, he slept with a lot of women. <laughs> and uh, th there are a few more famous uh, Ven v Venetians. Venetians. I'm going to say that. Venetians. Uh, for example, the composer Vivaldi. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily about these people. It's also a lot about visitors to Venice. So very often, Ackroyd uses the words of Dickens, of Henry James, of... Uh, Percy Shelley and Lord Byron and various visitors to Venice to show us what these people experienced in Venice. So that, that's another way in which the portrait is very impressionistic, is that it, it, it gives us the impressions of other people in Venice. So it's about Venice and the impression it makes on visitors and on its inhabitants. I wanted to read this book quickly, but I could not. I read it very slowly, it refused to be read quickly, it demanded to be savored slowly, and I yielded to the rhythm of the book, and that made it much more interesting for that. Um, so I do recommend Venice, but not if you're in the rush, just read it slowly. And the third book I read was not nonfiction. Um, I did not make any pledge that I would read only nonfiction in November, uh, but I thought I would try. But after reading about North Korea and uh, residential schools in Canada and a serial killer, um, I needed something light. And I found a cute little cozy novel, An Irish Country Doctor by Patrick Taylor. It is set in the 1960s in a small village near Belfast in Northern Ireland. Uh, you may think, oh, 1960s, Northern Ireland. Ooh, that smells, uh, that, that, that sounds like troubles. Quite literally, but no, the, the troubles are mentioned, uh, The ten, not even the troubles, I should say the tensions are mentioned as existing in Northern Ireland, but that's it, that, there's nothing else. The rest is all about life in the village. It's uh, very picturesque, very quaint, very cozy. There, there's a dog named Guinness and there's a cat named Lady Macbeth. And there's an old doctor who has quite a character, uh, quite a temper. And there's a young doctor who basically knows nothing, but he's learning quickly. And um, yeah, it's just life in a village, in a small village. Uh, uh, it's just a comfy read. It's a cozy read. So if you're looking for something cozy, I recommend this. Uh, you, you can't not... You, you can't think too much when you read this because at some point I started to think a little bit how horrible the doctors were treating their patients uh, because for some of them, they, nowadays it would be unacceptable. They, they would be sued if they treated their patients like that. Uh, but if you put that on the side and say, oh, it's just a funny book, it's just for comedy purposes, then it becomes really nice and very comfortable. So apparently it's the first in a series of 12. 
I thought it was the first in a series of four. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to read all 12 of them, but I, I will certainly go back to that series. Now, as to what I am reading right now, um, there's only one that I've uh, truly, really begun. That is uh, Second Hand Time by Svetlana Alexievich. I am at page 106 out of almost 700. So, uh, but I have read 100 pages. Uh, the reason I say that I've really started is because I'm feeling a bit like a butterfly at the moment. I start a little something and then I read a few pages of another one and a few pages of another one. And I have like five books on the go right now, but I very much doubt that I will end more than one of them. I don't know which one it will be. <laughs> so that's why I'm not talking about them necessarily, because I think I'm just at the testing the buffet at the moment. I don't know which one I will read. So uh, when I am... When I have more pages read and that I know I will finish the book, I'll talk about it. But for the moment, it's not worth it. So that is what I've been doing this week. It's what I've been reading this week, I should say, because what I've been doing is working. Um, <laughs> but that's what I've been reading this week. I hope you're having a great reading week. I hope you're still enjoying nonfiction November. And I hope you're making great reading discoveries. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!